This story is about a man named Kenneth Supreme McGriff, who hired a group of hitmen. Today we're going to talk about the lives of those hitmen and who they are and how they were brought together to perform a hit on e-money bags in front of the house of Tupac's right hand man, Stretch. The case remained unsolved until a key piece of evidence was found in a separate case in a different state. This is the story of E. Moneybags. Alvin was not scared and insisted that he's not giving up his bike. He wrestled the bike away from the gunman, went home and came back with a 12 gauge shotgun. Alvin located the gunman and chased him into a local video game arcade and after searching for him, Alvin found him hiding in a corner and pulled out the 12 gauge and threatened his life. The gunman was scared for his life and apologized for what he did. Alvin accepted his apology, turned around and was about to leave. At that moment, the gunman pursued Alvin and Alvin turned around and fired, hitting him in the chest. He survived, but somehow Alvin was never arrested and charged for that crime. Marlon, the guy Alvin hustled for, would later be a victim of a homicide, which enabled Alvin to take over Marlon's territory. Alvin continued to hustle. He was never a big time dealer selling weight, as he was just a local hustler doing hand to hand deals with regular customers. As time passed, the hustle became too much of a grind and he switched the type of drugs he was hustling. This was a good decision because this upgraded his clientele and made life easier selling to addicts of a higher social class. Into the story comes a man named Russell Allen. Alvin and Russell grew up together. Russell was also a hustler. He hustled for a man named Emmanuel, who was also a drug dealer. Russell would meet up at Alvin's house and would proposition Alvin on multiple occasions to commit a homicide with him. Alvin would continually turn down the job, but Russell then offered him a substantial amount of money and Alvin finally agreed to do the hit. The next day, Russell introduced Alvin to the man that he would be doing the hit for, Russell's boss, Emmanuel Mosley. They met up on 149th Street and 8th Avenue, and after Alvin's involvement was solidified, Emmanuel, along with a man named Barry, picked them up and drove them out to Jamaica, Queens. Jamaica Queens is the stomping grounds of Supreme and the Supreme Team. The meeting just happened to take place three miles from where E-Money caused the passing of Black Just. Alvin stayed in the car and watched as Emmanuel got out and spoke to Supreme. Emmanuel stated that during the conversation, Supreme explained that a crew was trying to extort his man, Irv Lorenzo. Who is Irv Lorenzo? At the time, Irv was a very successful man that ran a successful music label named Murder Inc. that featured artists like Ashanti and Ja Rule. Irv was personally and financially connected to Supreme. Supreme advised Emmanuel there were four people he needed whacked. Big Nose Troy, E Moneybags, a guy named Homicide, and a man named Green Eyed Born for assaulting members of the Murder Inc. record label. Who is Troy? Troy was once arrested and charged with two counts of second degree murder for the homicide of two innocent bystanders back in 1995 during a basketball game in Baisley Pond Park. Emmanuel stated that the going rate was $25,000 a head. The hit team would stay in a basement apartment in Queens while looking for the targets they needed to hit. A man from Supreme's crew named Dennis showed the hit team pictures of E-Money and would drive around every day looking for him. They would ride around in the daytime and at nighttime they would go to clubs with the intention of spotting the targets and setting them up for the hit. After a month of looking, they found E-Money. At the time, Dennis had a girlfriend in Queens Village, New York. She had an apartment across the street from the house that belonged to Stretch and his brother Majesty. Since E-Money was a part of that crew, she patiently waited for him to show up. One day while Emmanuel was with Supreme, Dennis's girlfriend Nicole called and advised Dennis that she had eyes on E-Money. She said his location was on the corner of the house across the street from her apartment. Dennis went on a reconnaissance mission and hopped on his motorcycle and took a ride past the location just to be 100% sure that E-Money was actually out there. 
He confirmed, in fact, that it was E-Money, and then went back to the basement apartment where they all hopped in their cars and took off to the location. When they got there, E-Money was in the driver's seat of a silver 2000 Lincoln Navigator. He was a gangster, and he knew the type of beef he had, so he was chilling with the pistol on his lap and talking to someone through the front passenger door. That someone saw what was about to happen and took off running. And on July 16, 2001, the team of hitmen ran up on E-Money and before he had a chance to use his weapon, they unloaded 40 times. They ran back to the car and took off and drove straight back to the basement apartment in Queens. While at the house, they put all the weapons, bulletproof vests and clothes in a garbage bag. Dennis gathered up everything and left the house with the garbage bag. Emmanuel drove the hit team back to Harlem and the next time Emmanuel saw Supreme was the day he got paid for the job. He received $25,000 which was then split four ways. Alvin received $7,500 for his participation in this crime. That same month, Supreme got pulled over while driving with $10,000 cash and a Glock that allegedly once belonged to a relative of Irv and Chris Lorenzo. Before he could be sentenced, Supreme was on the run. Law enforcement would finally catch up with him in December 2002 in a Miami hotel with a fine female, some ecstasy and Viagra. Three months after the passing of E-Money, around October 21, 2001, the hit team caught up with Troy at a sports bar in Jamaica, Queens. Emmanuel stated that Troy was spotted by a team of three hitters and he fell to the floor when a hitman by the name of eBay unloaded. A witness testified that Troy Singleton was either hit for assaulting a member of the record label Murder Inc. or to stop Troy from retaliating for the hit on E-Money. E-Money's homicide would remain unsolved until an unrelated event brought it all together. That event was when a hustler from the Bronx that was associated with the Supreme Team organization became a victim. His name was Karen, and Karen was a known hustler, but he was caught up in some legal trouble relating to a drug trafficking case he caught in North Carolina. In that case, he was caught with five bricks, worth more than $200,000, and was believed to have cut a deal with law enforcement for a reduced sentence. He was scheduled to go to court for that case in September 2001. Karen was making moves with the Supreme Team and he took a ride with another convicted hustler named Dwayne, who was also from the Bronx. Together they drove from the Bronx to the stash house in Maryland. This was supposed to be a quick move because Dwayne didn't pack a bag and he had on some slippers. When they got to the stash house in Maryland, they pulled up in the parking lot in a rented car. While in the parking lot, they were ambushed when someone ran up on them and unloaded. Neither of the men survived. A man named Victor Wright, who was another associate of Supreme, would later be charged with the crime. I guess Karen would no longer be able to fulfill his court date in September or speak on who else was involved in his trafficking case. Four days after the crime, while investigating the double homicide in front of the stash house, Investigators found fingerprints. Those fingerprints belonged to Supreme. That's when NYPD got involved. Not only did they find prints in the apartment, they also found his prints on a bag and in that bag was some video footage. That footage was of e-money bags in front of Stretch's house before the team of hitmen ran up on him. The recordings were from July 13th to July 16th the same day E-Money met his faith. The audio in the background of the video was from a show named The Hughleys, starring D.L. Hughley. After further investigation, law enforcement was able to prove that the specific episode aired not only the same day E-Money was hit, but minutes before he lost his life. Until the time of that footage was found, the crime remained unsolved as there were no suspects. It's hard to imagine that a criminal would keep this kind of evidence laying around in a stash house. This was the proverbial nail in the coffin. During the time of all these bodies and other serious crimes, the Lorenzo brothers was fighting for their reputation and freedom. After years of the government trying to prove that Supreme gave them startup money and laundered millions through the Murder Inc. record label, in December 2005, 
the Lorenzo brothers would be acquitted of money laundering charges. Alvin was arrested. Emmanuel would later be arrested in January 2006, and since they were facing a life sentence for their crimes, both Alvin and Emmanuel signed a cooperation agreement with law enforcement in order to reduce their sentencing. As part of the obligation in that agreement, they must tell the truth or face a minimum of life imprisonment. Just about all the hitmen and women involved in this case agreed to testify against Supreme so they could receive a lighter sentence. Emmanuel, who organized the hit team for both E-Money and Troy, had a history of cooperating with the government. But all the killers and hustlers he moved with never knew or simply overlooked his past snitching and cooperation with law enforcement back in 1991, when he served seven years of a 20-year sentence. Even though the prosecutor insisted on a lethal injection, E-Moneybag's mother would say that she didn't want the death penalty for Supreme as she didn't want that on her conscience. Supreme's sister would cry and beg the judge to spare the life of her brother. In court, the 14-year-old son of Troy Singleton gave his statement and talked about waiting for his dad to pick him up from school even though his dad had already passed. The judge reached over and gave him a tissue for his tears, which caused members of the Brooklyn jury to start crying. On February 1, 2007, Supreme would be found guilty of drug dealing, money laundering, and setting up the homicide of E Money Bags and Troy Singleton. Five days later, on February 6, 2007, the jury was unable to reach a unanimous verdict regarding the death penalty, and as a result, at 46 years old, Kenneth Supreme McGriff would be sentenced to a mandatory life in prison. For this specific case, it goes as follows. In 2015, Emmanuel Mosley, the guy that organized both hit teams, received a sentencing of time served. After serving approximately 12 years, in 2016, Alvin Smiley received a sentencing of time served. After serving 11 years, in 2017, Barry received a sentencing of time served. Dennis Crosby, the guy on the motorcycle that verified E-Money's location, was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Dennis's girlfriend, Nicole, the one who recorded the video and told Dennis E-Money's location, received a slap on the wrist. Russell Allen, the guy that recruited Alvin, was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Victor Wright, who committed the double homicide in the parking lot in Maryland, as far as I could tell, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. This is the story of Kenneth Supreme Griff and the hitmen involved in the homicide of E Money Bags. If you enjoyed this content, give it a thumbs up and click on the next episode from Big City Crime TV.